In this Fusion 360 tutorial, I'm going to show you how to model this 3D printed clamp. It has 15 millimeter threads and can clamp to a table as thick as two inches. This can be used to make all kinds of custom fixtures combined with laser cutting to have the best of both worlds of the three dimensional organic forms of 3D printing and the strong planar forms of laser cutting. This clamp design is based on a design made by Slant 3D. It's been modified and simplified. You should check out all of Slant 3D's 3D printed designs. There's a link in the description. To get started making a 3D printed clamp, we need to make a component. Rule number one in Fusion 360 is to create a component. Then label the component. I'll label this component clamp. Next, I'll create a sketch on one of the vertical planes. Press L to select the line tool in Fusion 360, and we'll draw a general clamp shape. Draw straight down, then over, then down, then over, and continue making your clamp shape. Fusion will likely put in some constraints. Some of these are helpful and some are not. Notice here, my two points are not coincident. I need to change that. I can use a sketch constraint right here, coincident. Click this point and this point. Now they're coincident. Down here, I have a perpendicular constraint. I don't want this perpendicular constraint, so I'll click it and delete it. I'm going to move this point down. As you can see, now I have an exaggerated angle. I can dimension an angle in Fusion 360 by clicking two lines. Press D, select this line, then this line, and type 10. If for some reason you can't put an angle here, you likely either have a vertical constraint here or a perpendicular constraint here or here. Double check. Next, I'll dimension this one. Click, click, 10 degrees. Here, I want this distance to be 20 millimeters and the same as this distance, 20 millimeters. This could be parametized with user parameters so you can make different size clamps very quickly. This distance will be 56 millimeters. And then this distance will be 58 millimeters. Since 50 millimeters is just about two inches, that extra eight millimeters gives you enough clearance to get around a table. We want these two lines to be collinear. So I'll select collinear. And finally, we need to lock this to the origin. One of the easiest ways to do that is with the horizontal vertical constraint. Hold shift, and then it will reveal the midpoint on a line, then click the origin. Hold shift, and that little triangle in X appears, then click the origin. Now, if I look at my sketch, it should be fully constrained. Finish the sketch, then press E to extrude. Instead of going one side, let's go symmetric, and then the distance will be 25. So this will make a 50 millimeter part, but it'll still be centered on the origin in Fusion 360. This is a little square and pointy, so we'll use the fillet command to round it out. Select fillet, then these top outer edges, and type 20. Next, we'll fillet these front edges. Select fillet, this top edge, and this bottom edge, and type 15. We want to avoid inside right angles whenever possible, so we'll modify chamfer, select this line, and this line, and type two millimeters. So this forms the basis of the clamp form. Now we need to add a hole so we can add something to clamp with. Select Create Sketch, and then whatever is the bottom of your clamp. So right here, this is the bottom face of the interior of the clamp. I'll select it, and then orbit a bit, and draw a circle right on the origin. That should be centered since you did a symmetrical extrude, and type 15. Press E to extrude this, and you can go all the way down, or instead of having a specific distance, you could select the extent type to be all, and then it only goes this far. This is also great because if you change the size of the clamp, this extrusion will still work in Fusion 360. Now we need to be able to sketch on the bottom here, but we don't have any sketch planes that are at this height and perpendicular. So we can use plane at an angle. It's so common that Fusion 360 uses it as one of the icons in the construction menu. Select plane at angle, and then select this line down at the bottom. That'll automatically put a zero degree plane, and then select OK. Now we want to draw a sketch right on this plane. Select sketch, then the plane. Now we're looking straight up from the bottom, 
we can draw C. And this will create a circle. We want this circle to be 25. Since we're drawing directly on the origin, I didn't need to project the other circle in. You can project the circle in if you were drawing off to the side. Now I'll press E and we'll go up 12 millimeters. This will cut into the shape and press OK. Next, we'll create some threads. Click the inside of this hole, then create thread. It should automatically detect the 15 millimeters. Do not select modeled yet because we want to add a chamfer on the top and bottom to make it easier to use. Press OK. Then select modify chamfer. Select this edge and this edge and type one millimeter. This will now chamfer that edge. Because of a quirk in Fusion 360 and making threads, we need to make sure this chamfer is after the thread. Then right click thread, edit feature, and click modeled. Now the threads are modeled and they have this correct chamfer lead in. And finally, we can decide which side is the bottom of our clamp and add a chamfer to that. Modify chamfer. We'll select 0.5. If you wanted to make this clamp thicker, you could now mirror it and have this side mirror across so you could have two clamps. But if you're not going to do that, we would also add the chamfer to this side. So I'll right click, edit feature, hold the control or command key to also select this face. Now both sides are chamfered. And lastly, we need to edit the feature to add these two edges. So right click, edit feature, and hold command or control those two edges and then also down at the bottom here now everything is chamfered and this part is complete remember if you want to mirror it across you can simply remove this face from the chamfer feature select the top level component by clicking this little dot then select create new component call this clamp bolt now clamp bolt is activated we need to create a cylinder for the bolt Create a sketch and select the horizontal plane. Press C to draw a circle, then select the origin. We centered everything on the origin to make sketching easier. Press 15 millimeters and then enter. Press E to extrude and then extrude however long you want your bolt to be. It doesn't need to be any longer than you need to clamp because there's always going to be some distance here. But if you want to have the full range of clamping so you can clamp something very thin you need to definitely make sure that it's more than the inside of the clamp and the thread section i'm going to select negative 70 for the bolt length now i need to draw a circle at the bottom to give the bolt a little bit of strength create sketch select the bottom of the bolt press c then draw out and type 24. Now we have this sketch right on the bottom of the bolt. Press E to extrude. You'll notice that it doesn't select this inside point automatically. Make sure you also select it and then go down 10. Now we'll add threads to this bolt. Select the outside face of the bolt, create thread. It should automatically select the metric profile and then select OK. We want to add a chamfer so the threads have a lead in. Select Modify, chamfer, select this top edge and this bottom edge and type 1. Now the top and bottom of the threads have a little bit of chamfer. Then go back to the threaded feature, right click, edit feature, select modeled. We need to create a sketch to chop off one side of the threads so we can 3D print this bolt flat on the print bed. That way the layer lines will be lined up the best way to have strength for the bolt. Create a sketch on the vertical plane. Next, we need to project in the body of the bolt. So instead of using the purple selection filter for specified entities, select the white one for bodies, and then select the entire bolt. And then press OK. This sketch is very complicated, so we don't want Fusion to keep calculating it. So select Finish Sketch. Then create a new sketch on the same plane. This time we'll only project in a couple of the points to make everything easier. Go to the top and make sure you have your selection filter to the purple section. Click this point, 
and then go down to the bottom of your bolt and select this point and press OK. Under Sketches, we can hide the previous sketch, Sketch 3. We can also hide the body so we don't see it right now. And we should only have these two points. Now I'll draw a rectangle and select Coincident and make sure the rectangle is coincident with those points. I can bring the body back now. And all I have to do is make sure that the sketch is above the bolt. So to do that, I'll press D and dimension it from here. Going down five millimeters past should be fine. And I'll do the same thing up here. I'll select this point and this point and type five millimeters. Always a good idea to fully constrain a sketch in Fusion. So I'll go ahead and select this section here and also make it dimensioned as 10 millimeters. We can press E to extrude. And by making this second sketch, we don't have to worry about all the little thread selections. Remember, we're in the middle, so we want to go symmetric, extrude out. But notice it's cutting both objects. We only want to cut the single object. So under Objects to Cut, make sure we deselect the body of the clamp. Now the bolt threads are chopped off on one side, and we can lay this flat on the 3D print bed. Finally, let's add a section that we can spin with our finger and thumb. Select Create Sketch and draw on the bottom of the bolt. Press P and we want to project in this side edge and select OK. Now draw a rectangle. This edge wants to be coincident with this edge. So we can use Collinear. Use the horizontal vertical constraint. Hold Shift. Select the midpoint and have it centered on the origin. Then we can simply dimension this section here to any dimension that we find appropriate. So I think I will dimension this 40, and then we'll also center this on the origin. Hold Shift, click the origin, and then the midpoint. This should fully constrain our sketch, and we can press E. Make sure you select all three sections, and then we'll extend down 25, and press OK. So now this will also lay flat on the print bed. We want to add some structure to this so it's not so straight right here. Create a sketch on the XZ plane. Zoom into your bolt, press P, and we want to project in this face and this face, press OK. And we'll draw a line from this point here down. We'll give this line an angle of 45. And then we can extrude. So we will extrude symmetrically. So as long as the distance is more than the edge of the circle is fine. So I'll leave this at 15. Press OK. Then we'll create a sketch right on top of this. Press P. And we want to project in this face. So your clamp might be in the way. So if you orbit around, I can select this face and this face, press OK. Then I'm going to draw a line from here to here. This should make these points and profiles selectable. So if I press E, I can select both of these and then extrude down. This makes this chamfer all the way to the edge because Fusion 360 has a trouble chamfering right to the edge there. And I can say distance all. OK, now I have a nice chamfer on the back of the bolt. Next, let's round out some of the edges with a fillet command. Select fillet. I'll select this edge, this edge, all the edges except for the ones that are laying flat on the print bed. Type in one millimeter or your desired fillet radius. And as you can see, it goes around that chamfer very nicely. Press OK. And then we want to chamfer the back side here. So select Modify Chamfer and select this face and 0.5. And that should chamfer the back so it gives a nice finish on the print bed and select OK. Because this is a 3D printed part, we need to add some clearance for the threads. So the easiest way to do that is on the clamp since the bolt has all this interesting geometry with the cutoff. So I'm going to hide the bolt and then activate the clamp component. 
So select the little circle right here and activate the clamp component. This will keep your design history in Fusion 360 together with the separate components. I need to offset faces. Angle so you can see into the clamp. If you need to make a section plane to see better, you can do that as well. Select Modify, Offset Face. We want to select the major diameter, which is this outside face, the minor diameter of the thread, which is the inside, right here. So that's the minor diameter. And then either the top or the bottom of the thread, but not both. Then type negative 0.15. Now that is offset those faces inward and press OK. This will give us a little bit of clearance so the threads will thread together much easier. And as you can see, that keeps the shape of the threads, even though they are smaller. Now we can add attachment points to the top of our clamp. So if you need to add a bolt or a fastener, now would be the time to do it. But this is the how to sculpt the basic clamp form. In the next video, I'll show you how to add captive nuts to this so you could put in a nut and a fastener and clamp laser cut boards to your clamp. Your clamp. Happy 3D modeling.